Yes, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Daily Dose podcast. Today, we have yet another very special guest on the show. This guy has been a huge fan in the UK scene for a very long time. He's recently decided to step up himself and jump in the ring as well. Patrick Courier, what's going on, man? Hey, man, nice to, nice to be a guest on your show. Appreciate it, dude. No, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, like, with yourself, jumping straight into the questions, like, you've been a fan for a long time now, but (laughs) how was it that you got into battle rap originally? So it's kind of crazy, actually. Well, look, okay, so if if you want to go right back, the first battle rap stuff I ever um, listened to or, you know, checked out was, like, um, a lot of the Scribble Jam stuff and really old-school stuff, because I was, uh, at that time... Or, you know, around that time, I was working in a indie, like an independent record store. And um, I used to, because there was only a few of us working there, I used to be able to order in whatever I wanted. So I used to just, <laughs> rather than getting things that I knew could sell, I would just order things that I thought sounded interesting, you know. So um, I ordered in some Scribble Jam DVDs. And uh, I, th- I don't even think the, the battle rap was the first thing I'm, I was interested in on, on those. I've, j- I've just been a hip hop fan for my whole life. And I just thought, oh, this has got, you know, uh, it's got graph in there and, you know, and like, like break dancing and, and, and like DJ battles. And so I was like, oh shit, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get this because I love the culture of hip hop. And I, after watching a few of those, I was kind of like, okay, this is really interesting. But I had no idea that that shit happened in this country. Cause uh, as you can tell from my accent, like I'm kind of from <laughs> more than more than one place you know I, I i spent the first half of my life in the u.s and and over here and i didn't know that that side of hip-hop had translated over here and so the first the first uk like battle thing that i that i ever saw was actually an event so i actually saw an event before i saw any of the um the online videos or anything a friend of mine who was a rapper basically at the time um was like oh i've been asked to to you know do this battle so i'm gonna go and do it would you come and support me and so i went there to to watch him do a battle and it, you know i was excited about it because i didn't because it was the first time i'd heard of it happening over here and it was um it was in like tw- i think it was 2011 or 2010 2011 it was it was the um don't flop fourth quarter event it was in london and it okay. and it had like the headline battle was like um, Stowaway versus Soweto Kinch, and okay. uh, and like yeah, and it was the first time I'd seen any of it. So I so I went to this event, and I think you can see me in most of the, <laughs> most of the videos apart from the Soweto Kinch one. Uh, like stood up on a chair in the background because I was just so interested as you know what what the hell was going on, and um, after that I just you know I just I I got you know, obsessed with it. I, I started binging on it and, um, I, which I think is a story for a lot of battle rap fans. Um, and for me as well, you know, because I've, cause I'm a, a songwriter, um, and, and stuff myself, like lyrics have always been of super high importance to me. And I was seeing all of this new kind of stuff happening in that acapella realm that I hadn't, you know, I hadn't considered yet. And I think for me, it was also an element of that where, I just really wanted to absorb all of the, like, the learning of the new ways that people were using words, like new ways to me. I tried and trying to then incorporate that into what I did. So yeah, sure. that makes sense, man. Right? And uh, like, who was it then? Who was your your friend that that battled so, on that don't flop? Yeah, so so I haven't seen him in many years now, but he was um it was actually like a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a um scandal really because um it was he was called Wayne Rooney MC and he uh, and he battled uh, and he battled Locksmith and it was Locksmith's debut and um and I, so I saw that battle and it went online and then this guy Wayne Rooney MC he um I don't know why I mean, he was he was a bit of a self-destructive dude basically but I don't know why I think it was because he lost the judge the judgment or whatever but he said it was because of work he wanted to get it taken down offline so he made like youtube complaints and then the whole thing got pulled and then obviously he then fell out with the don't flop guys and stuff and and it pissed off you know locksmith and all those guys and then he never battled again but he i think he he then later on he at the start of king of the ronalds 
he was one of the hosts for that for a while because I think he was friends with Mickey, like we're pretty good friends with Mickey. And, um, and then, yeah, so it's like kind of weird convoluted way, but yeah, then, you know, I haven't seen him for many years now, but yeah, like at that time he, he, uh, he was a real good rapper as well, but yeah, he, he just was, he was uh, his own worst enemy in that respect, you know? I, I don't remember what he looked like or his performance or anything like that, but I remember seeing the name on like a, on a flyer somewhere and thinking, what the fuck is going on here? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sort of, I guess like at the time he did look a bit like Wayne Rooney, to be fair. He had like short, you know, like really, really close cut sort of buzz cut. And he was kind of like, you know, I don't know. He looked like a potentially about to go bald British dude, you know? <laughs> right. Makes sense. Yeah, no, he was from my town. So, so um, yeah. And because I, because there weren't that many people around here who were that, who were like, that into hip hop, you know, generally the, the few people that were kind of grav gravitated towards each other regardless, you know? Sure, that makes sense. Nice, man. But yeah, it's um, not very often that people kind of get into it from going to an event first, if that makes sense, you know, people. Yeah, no, I know. It, it's definitely a rarity when I've talked to other people, they're like, oh shit, you know, because most people are like, oh, I saw, you know, Mark Grist first Blizzard, or I saw, you know, some Lunar Sea Battles or something, but those stuff, that was all stuff I, I, I you know, watched later. Sure, that makes sense, but yeah, and it was, um, so, Stowaway versus Soweto Kinch, did you say that was the headline of the event? Yeah, that was the headline. There was a bunch of other battles that were, weren't really of note although um i'm pretty sure that might have been the event that mr 13 tried out as well or one of his very first events so there was a few good battles on the card and then a and then a kind of a bunch of tryouts i think um who i never saw again <laughs> right okay yeah. that makes sense but yeah it was if i remember rightly that was quite a good event overall especially for your first event to go to like there was um there was some decent battles on that card, if I remember rightly. But oh, yeah, for sure, and it was a good introduction. You know what I mean? Nice, nice man. But uh, with yourself, then, like, what led to you moving over to the UK originally? Like, have you got family from here as well, or? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of to to kind of make a long story short. My dad was American Air Force, and my mum's British. And so, right. so all of her side of the family is over here. He met her when he was stationed over here. And, I, and, and, and then like, I was actually born in this country while we were stationed on uh, an Air Force base. But, you know, I think I was maybe like six months old, we moved over to California. And then I lived there for the first half of my life. Or, you know, I lived, I lived in California for 10 years. I lived on other Air Force bases. And I lived, I lived on, a, we came back here, lived on an Air Force base here. Then I lived in Oklahoma, then back here, a bit of time in Boston. But the reason why we, we came back here and settled here was uh, basically my folks divorced and, you know, we preferred my mum. So. <laughs> Fair enough, man. No, I like it. And uh, you're like, you're, are you based in Oxford? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, Banbury. So it's like in Oxfordshire, like near, near enough to, to, to Oxford. Right. Okay. So I'm guessing, generally speaking, most of the events that you've, you've been to have been like London-based events then. Yeah, London. I've traveled to Manchester for, for some events. I've traveled to, um, did a Bristol one, I think. And I've, I've done, you know, I've, I've kind of gone around to different places, Reading as well. But yeah, most, mostly London. Although weirdly, um, King of the Ronalds did one event in Banbury. So like, in fact, the event where Pedro ripped EMC's shirt, shirt like take, it took place in like a pub that's just down my street. <laughs> okay. I just, yeah, I, I I remember hearing they were going to Banbury like that. That was that was one of the good things about Ronalds. To be fair, like the amount of events they did in just cities that normally wouldn't get that kind of like sure. event. Like I know they did events in like Hull and places like that as well. So. Yeah. They just didn't kind of they didn't really give a fuck, did they? So they kind of like just took it wherever they felt. To, I think and they were up for I guess like taking risks and stuff that's the main thing they just took risks and, and sometimes they worked and sometimes they didn't but yeah that was a, definitely a nice part of their kind of company definitely yeah man and um, I see I've seen recently so you're you're about to do your your tryout essentially right on is it Beast Anglia you were going to do it on yeah so I was trying to do it sneakily you know like I, I wasn't really going to announce it or anything like that um, but Essentially, um, it's it. You know, 
I'm very much a big believer in, in kind of having like a bucket list and, tr and actually trying to tick something off like every year or whatever, you know, and, um, and, you know, on my bucket list is, is, you know, cause I've been such a fan of it for so long is, is battling, you know, and, um, and like, there's a little proviso on there. I'd, ideally I'd like to do a battle where I do some kind of freestyle flip element, although I'm not going to put that pressure on myself for, for, <laughs> for the debut kind of battle. Um, but yeah, so I was meant to be battling Luigiano um, on Beast Anglia. Uh, he's the guy who used to run that um, poetic warfare battle rap company. And he's done a bunch of dub scandal battles and, and stuff like that. So I wrote three rounds for him and was ready to do it. And then obviously um, for his own reasons and then also for quarantine reasons, the event just never went down. So um, that's still pending. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I've done like, you know, I've done one of these eight year words battles against that Robin HD kid. Um, and also I've been, I have been asked to do a battle on that K shark TV, that American league. Um, and I'm, I am up for it provisionally, like provided I've got the time amongst kind of all this recording I'm doing and stuff, but yeah. So I don't know, dipping my toes in, uh, really just to satisfy the, um, I don't want to be on my deathbed and look back and think, ah, really wish I'd done a fucking battle, you know? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. And K shot then, is that the, I've seen like Hulk and Matt Cherry and a couple yeah. of others have been on it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he reached, uh, the guy who runs it or somebody who works for it reached out to me a few weeks ago, but mainly to ask me like if I knew any UK battlers who would be up for it. And I kind of was like, oh yeah, I'll, you know, have a chat to some people. And, and I actually forgot about it at the time. And then, all these battles started coming out and Hulk tagged me in something just saying that he wanted to see me on one of the battles. And so I have, you know, I've sent a provisional message to the, to the guy and we've ch chatted a little bit about the potential of it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I am up for it. Just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it, we'll see how it comes down. Nice man. And yeah, I mean, I've been following these, uh, like challenges on the don't flop forum and stuff mm. and like, you can rap to be fair i i, I knew that you were uh, like i knew you were a musician like but i i didn't realize that like you could rap if i'm honest but yeah no the, the, very impressed to be fair thanks man the funny thing is it's like you know my first the first like music i ever got into was like like hip hop and soul and then, and then like rock. And then, you know, I've, I've been a musician for years. I've been in all kinds of bands from like metal bands to indie bands and rock bands. And, and then, and I've done like bits and pieces of like, you know, guesting on people's tracks. I've, I've, I've recorded like six tracks with C major and one of them was on his 10,000 hours record. And then he also released another single with me on it. And I did a bunch of, you know, bits and pieces like that. But rapping is something I've always just kind of done for myself. I never really revealed that skill, even to a lot of, you know, my, my friends, like my close friends knew that I did because quite often, um, like I, I, I do like moonlight work in, in the bar and I was a bartender for a long time and I would just freestyle like all the time while I was behind the bar just to keep myself entertained. So some of my friends kind of knew that I, that I did it, but um, I never really made a big deal out of it publicly because I didn't want to confuse I uh, basically I didn't want to confuse listeners to my kind of <laughs> heartfelt singer songwriter material by like you know going oh this guy also does hip hop and stuff I thought it was I thought it was a confusing message but actually now that all this kind of quarantine shit came down and 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 the stuff that I've been through in the last kind of couple of years made me think do you know what like fuck it I might die next year you know maybe I'll live a long time but no one's no one's got a long life promised so why don't i just put myself out there you know and and so uh yeah it was more kind of that uh, the impetus of kind of not wanting to lose opportunities and you know fuck it like if i if i got hit by a car tomorrow right look and i hadn't done these challenges you never would have known i could rap loads of people would have never known i could do that that would be forgotten to the sands of time you know so i was like fuck it. I just want to, I'm just going to show off then, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so yeah. So that's what I've started doing, I guess. Um, and it's nice cause the feedback's been crazy. Um, you know, I've, I've had long time friends of mine who are like producers and stuff 
contact me and say they want to make beats and for me and help make an album. And I've had other rappers like on the scene, you know, like guys who I really respect, like, you know, your Bobby Rexes and, and these guys, like, I, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to be doing a track with, with Bobby. I'm doing a, I'm, I've got a hook for, um, for Raptor that I'm recording. I'm, I've, I've recorded a verse with Georgie Roots and Alice Dean and those guys. And, and it's, it's crazy. Like I've had really, really, um, great feedback. So I'm, I'm super happy that I, that I did do that because I was, you know, before I did that first challenge, I was hella nervous about putting it out there, but, um, but I just thought, you know, like, what's a life where you haven't taken any risks. So I just put it up and won that first, that first challenge. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do this. So, um, yeah, it was really like a, a wake up call for me and then like a big confidence boost to do these things. Cause now I feel really comfortable, uh, just, you know, those challenges, you get an hour to write them, you know, and I didn't even know I had that skill to write that fast. So, so in doing that, I'm like, Oh shit, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I can, I can actually do this shit. Like I can fuck with this. So yeah, it's been, it's been a really positive experience for me, all that stuff. Nice. Yeah. It's been good to see, man. I've enjoyed it and uh, definitely looking forward to see you do your first kind of acapella battle as well. I think that'd be good to see, but yeah, man, there, um... I, I wish I could spit you some of the material now. Cause I got some shit for him, but like, <laughs> but I don't want to spoil anything before I actually get to battle him, you know? No, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, Beast Anglia, I think it's a it's a really good fit for for tryouts as well. Like the events seem, they seem really lively. They seem like good fun, and um, yeah, you're also I, kind of guaranteed to get more views on it if that makes sense. Because yeah, the way I like they the share whole, it. Uh, yeah, the whole Facebook that like uploading it to Facebook first yeah. seems to do well for them. So the thing is, is, is that's an idea that. Um, that bam came up with years ago i remember it was before he stopped working for df and all that i think he said then like he was talking about the engagement with you know youtube videos and the engagement with facebook videos and he said then like i don't understand why there isn't a league or or some sort of setup where people are kind of exclusively almost or you know or sort of aiming their their uploads for facebook and then as soon as beast anglia have done it i mean this is years later obviously because no one really took up on that but as soon as beast anglia did it like you know they are getting thousands of views on completely no-name battlers you know they have some bigger battlers but the smaller guys are getting views again and that's really positive i think you know yeah 100 percent. like i'd I, I kind of didn't understand the thought process behind it at first. And then seeing like, I can't remember who the battle was between, but seeing some of their battles get like seven and a half K views was, yeah, it just it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I think the thing is, is like, it's so much easier because of the way that the Facebook al algorithm works. And, you know, it, it, like generally, you know, if you, if you post a YouTube video on Facebook rather than just a status, you know, you're on, you're going to get, you know, a few likes or whatever. Whereas, you know, you post a status, you, you can, more of your friends are going to see that. Whereas if it's a video that's uploaded to Facebook, the algorithm's going to be pushing that over YouTube videos people have posted. So more people are going to see it and more people are, makes it a lot easier for the battlers involved or, or the fans or the, to, you know to share it on their social media and that's kind of a key element really that's what people were doing loads of that um and then you know when the kind of landscape of battle rap changed a bit people stopped kind of promoting themselves in the same way whereas this you know a lot of these guys are they're young dudes they're hungry they don't really like they don't they they're not kind of jaded by by like the changes in uk battle rap they just want to do something cool and put it out there and so they're they are actually working to get people to see it, you know, which is a positive change, really. Definitely, yeah, man. And uh, I've I've had a chat with Nick myself, and once the once the academy's over, I, I quite fancy jumping on one of their cards as well, just because the let's atmosphere looks go. good. Let's fucking go. <laughs> be good, but uh, like with yourself, though, man. Like out of the events that you've been to now then so what kind of stands out as your like all-time favorite event personally so up until up until like the last couple of years 
my favorite event that I went to was probably um, like Sunburn 2, maybe. Um, and that, uh, it was one of the sunburns anyway. And that was just a really fucking fun weekend, you know, because I was, I was like deep into the scene then. So I, so I, anytime I showed up to an event, there was always going to be people who I really considered my friends there and stuff, you know? Um, and yeah, like I was staying at BAMS. We had, you know, we had like Yunnan and shocks and, and, and soul and all those guys were staying over as well, you know, like ended up staying over as well. It was just a really fun party vibe and people were ciphering and stuff you know at bam's house and and shit so there was a lot of like i don't know just like really cool shit for for people who are fans of rap and fans of like battles and shit um so that was that was a hell of fun uh event but in the last couple of years right because of the way that things have changed and you know a lot of events dip to load but then there's been kind of a little bit of a resurgence um that um that mental health the, the cashmore the first cashmore event um that that bagnell put on which had like um uh, like shuffle versus soul and um shit who was his partner in that uh, soul and quill yeah soul and quill and like it had um you know like scissors and enlish and it had it felt so much like an old school event and like the vibe of it was so great. And it really felt like those golden era battle events, you know? Um, so that was amazing. And actually I had a great time at the last premier battles. Um, the, the one where, you know, Tay Rock canceled and all those guys didn't show up. It ended up being such a great event because the guys who did show up, you know, like your chillers and real deal and people like that, they really give a fuck and they really turn up, you know, and, and that was a really, you know, it was an awesome event to go to. So yeah, throughout the years, there's been loads of crazy things. In fact, five BW as well. That was one of the big, the biggest ones that I'd, you know, gone to at the start of the whole thing. That was fucking amazing as well. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's some, there's loads of crazy, crazy events I've been to. Um, I've been very lucky because I kind of like, I guess I'd sort of accidentally got into it not super early but early enough to see some of the shit that people really would have loved to have seen you know new fans and stuff definitely yeah man and uh like sunburn too so i'm pretty sure i was at that event as well that was where, where tony raptor battled and like crafty yeah. versus jay shaw is that the same yeah. event Yes, yeah, yeah, and the um, and there was like a there was like a big J lefty battle. There was um, I think it was Peace Soldier and Matter. Yeah, Peace. Yeah, exactly. That was such a, a an amazing battle. And like Pammy, I think Pammy battled at that. Yeah, he uh, did. He uh, battled Harry Baker. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. So it was that was that was a fucking really good event, man. Really good event. Yeah, that was amazing. To be fair, and then. Um, I was, I'm for, I've, in the last few years, I've had a bit of bad luck with events in the sense of I missed the, so the, the for Pete's sake event because I was yeah. in Amsterdam. Yeah, man, that was the one though. It was so good. Like, I, I really amazing. hope we can reschedule this, this next one because it had some, you know, honestly, if, 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 if you could only go to one event the whole year, I would suggest going to that because I really, yeah, I really thought it captured what I loved about battle rap, you know? Definitely. Yeah, man, I loved it. And it was, you know, just seeing people like Pamphlet, like Enlish, Scissors, people like that back on the card again as well was amazing to see. Yeah, man. So good. So good. Definitely. But yeah, I, I missed it, unfortunately, because of a holiday and then, I missed Apex because I was in Thailand. Um, yeah. There's another one that I've missed along the way as well. Oh, the first All-Star game I missed. Uh, yeah, no, I went to that one as well. Yeah, I've been pretty on it with trying to get to all the big events because obviously it's harder when, you know, for a while there was kind of like loads of leagues putting on events all the time. It was hard, harder to kind of make them. Um, but then I always kind of went to the sort of the – the kind of the standout big events that everyone put on, you know, and then the odd kind of spot one as well. Um, yeah. And yeah. 
there's been some great there's been some great stuff even even though you know for a while it, everyone was kind of like sounding the death knell of uk battle rap i don't really feel like that's the case i think it went through a lull and you know there's a lot of there's a lot to play for now i think i think i think it's there's so many good events that have happened in the last few years i can't i could i could never say that uk battle rap is dead you know what i mean definitely not i agree and I think the main reason people tend to to say things like that is just the fact that it's not getting the views that it used to. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we're not going to see that again. Like battle rap isn't a new and exciting concept anymore. So it's it's kind of just if you're aware of it and you enjoy it, you're going to watch it. And if not, nobody cares if that makes sense. So it's and this is the thing though, you know, because I kind of relate it to being a musician, like. I, when I, when I was first, you know, in bands and, and stuff like that, then I was really hungry to be successful and to get out there and like get, every, I wanted to be a fucking huge, I don't know, rock star or whatever I wanted to be at the time, you know? And, um, and it, you know, I, 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 I did do achieve a lot of things on the way there. You know, I de- demoed for major label, co- like record companies and played at Download Festival and Reading and Leeds and Tea in the Park and all those things, toured with some really big bands. But when that band ended, I realized that actually I'm not making the music for those reasons. The reason why I started making music wasn't to be a success at making music. It was to express myself and to make something good. You know what I mean? Whether or not a hundred people hear that and, and, and interpret it as good or millions of people, do it it's kind of irrelevant because as long as i've made something that means something to me and that i think stands the test of time or is a good piece of art then that's good enough so i kind of think that like that's for me that's real success in what i do um and in battle rap people who are just kind of doing it for views or some kind of uh you know d-list celebrity status I think they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Like you should be doing it to show off that you're fucking sick at that. You know what I mean? And to, to like enjoy like the, the spirit of competition and like, yeah, just showing what you can do. That's the real thing. Um, so yeah, for me, I think it's people who maybe have their priorities fucked up, you know, or maybe are a bit too self-involved or something. Yeah, no, I completely agree, man. And it's, uh, yeah, there's. I think there's a lot of people that are that are still to this day in battle rap for the wrong reasons, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I can't see it changing anytime soon. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things, I guess. But I mean, as a whole, I think this current kind of period that we're in in the world at the moment, I think. I think it could actually be really helpful for UK battle rap, if I'm honest. Like, yeah, I've not I've not been part of all the forums and stuff for a few years, to be honest. I kind of yeah. left a while ago, but I've recently kind of got back involved just to try and promote the podcast a bit and stuff. And yeah, yeah, fair play. They're not what they were. Like, they're they're genuinely quite positive nowadays. Like, there's no yeah. constant moaning about things or whatever. And everyone's yeah. trying to create content for everyone to get involved in and stuff and it's and i think that is that's that that's that kind of theory of like you know essentially everything got tore down you know like the whole thing came down there was a lot of people moaning and just trying spreading negative shit and stuff and and that was i i don't know what exactly why that happened but just people bringing their drama or or clout chasing or you know I don't know, trying to, trying to get one over on the next person. I don't know. There was a lot of that for a while. And then most of those people have fucked off. <laughs> and, uh, and, and now, like, I do think it is a case of the kind of, the, the, the people who are, like, you know, more like, create, like creators of, of, of content and, and people who actually really care about their craft and about the, 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 like, the sport, I guess it is, as a whole have kind of like taken the reins of it and yeah there's just there's a lot less posting i guess but um i'd rather there be less posting and people not just like fucking being dicks to each other you know because ultimately one of the things that really attract attracted me and it attracts a lot of people about battle rap is it's a community unlike any other you know you can 
you can go every time I went to an event before I had, you know, friends at them, I made friends, you know, like I was like instantly accepted by people and like, because, you know, it's not often you go to something where everyone has like a shared passion about something, you know, that doesn't really happen at gigs. Even, you know, you, you go, you don't go and see a, a band and then make friends with five people while you're there. Like it happens a lot less. Whereas in battle rap events, that's really commonplace. You know, you go to one event and then the next event you go to, you've already got people, you know, there and it just, it, you know, builds from there. So Definitely. it's nice that some of that is, is, is returning to even just like, you know, the online sort of presence of things. Yeah. Agreed, man. And like, I've been to probably about 50 plus events in total now yeah. and like in a couple of different countries as well. And I've, I've only ever been to one event with company. Like I normally just go on my own because yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm going to just get and chat into someone and have a good time regardless. And yeah, yeah. like you said, there's not many, it's not many environments that you feel comfortable enough to do that. Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's it's good to see that things are, are kind of getting back to normal on that front. But yeah. like for yourself, then, like what's what stands out for you as some of the best battles that you've seen live? If you've said top three, oh geez, uh, hmm, damn, that's a tough one. I wish I... <laughs> that wasn't on your list of questions. <laughs> no, um, let me think. Right, uh. Damn, uh, that's a really hard one, man. That's a really, really hard one, because I've seen I've seen so many, so many events. I, I guess, like to be honest, in the in recent history, I would say like that that Yunnan Raptor battle was fucking insane. Like it was so good um, to see to see Yunnan go like crazy beast mode like that. And 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 that's not to say like Raptor had fire ass bars when i watched the video back and and i kind of like tried to take myself out of the emotion of it because obviously you know there was a lot of emotion on stage he yeah. had some crazy bars like he really wrote the fuck out of that battle um but yeah it was it was again it was one of those things where the 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 sort of spirit of of like what i love about battle rap was happening you know on stage and yeah that was that was crazy and then also from the from the um for Pete's sake event, um, like seeing pamphlet battle there, his performance was so good. And again, yeah, it just gave me that feel of like, yeah, this is what it's about. Like this is, this is really good battle rap, but you know, I've seen so many battles. It's really hard to, to kind of separate them like that because I love a lot of different elements of battle rap. You know, like when I went to the URL event that happened over here, that, fucking event was incredible and there was some amazing battles on that card and yeah <laughs> it's 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 a it's a tough one to to call really um oh, that's think, fair enough yeah i think maybe more like certain performances stand out to me rather than battles as a whole but i'm sure that i've seen battles where i've gone yeah that's the best thing i've ever seen and now i've forgotten like which ones they were <laughs> Oh, definitely. Yeah, it happens a lot, doesn't it? And it changes all the time as well, I guess. But, like, what's what, what's the furthest that you've travelled to an event then, so far? Um, I mean, it probably is Manny. I was going to go to one of the Scotland events. I tried to go to an event when I was... Because um, there was, like... A, I, I tried to go to... When I was travelling for, like, sort of... I don't know, five months over in um, Australia and New Zealand. And I tried to go to an event um, in Australia, but it was on a different day to when I was going to be in that area. And I tried to go to, there's a Kiwi league as well. And I kind of wondered what the fuck they were, you know, what they did. I can't remember what it was called now, but I did look it up and, and kind of like considered slash if it would fit into my travel plans, I was going to try and go to a Kiwi league. But um, yeah, that didn't come off either. So I guess probably Manchester, but that's, it's a fucking, it's a long ass train ride from where I live. So, you know, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I've but it's done Manchester point. myself a few times and like even getting there from Cardiff, it takes a good five hours or so to get up there. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, it's, it's good when you've got like, you know, friends that you can, 
you know, share an Airbnb with or something, because then it kind of makes it seem a little bit less like you're just getting on a train for five hours, watching some dudes shout at each other and then fucking get back on the same train back. You know, that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. No, man. But, um, like, with, with yourself then, so obviously with you now about to take your first battle on, like, yeah. have you got any kind of long-term goals with battle rap or are you just kind of just going to take it as it comes? Yeah, I think it, it is to kind of take, take it as it comes. I'm not like... I'm not like out here trying to make a, a a career out of it. You know what I mean? I'm doing it for fun and uh, just to kind of show that I can, you know what I mean? Like a lot of times it is kind of a, a case of just like, if, if someone's put, if someone's suggested, you know, to, to go up against me and, and I'm inspired to write for him, then I'll, you know, I'll probably take that battle. Um, I've definitely, you know, I'm going to do um, like, obviously like, uh, the other thing is one thing that we kind of haven't touched on is very soon after my first event, I became, uh, I started because I, I, I'm an illustrator and a designer and stuff. I started designing for don't flop. I got a, a message from Sam graphics and I started um, doing a lot of the illustrative work for them. And then eventually graphics for the flyers and, and shit like that. So obviously I have to speak to, to Rowan a whole, a, a whole lot. And he, uh, we, I've talked to him about, you know, do, doing, um, doing a battle for don't flop as well. So I'll, I'll probably do a, a debut there as well. And, um, just kind of play it by ear. Like, it, it, obviously I'm not just going to, because I'm not interested in like becoming a fucking huge battler name or whatever. Um, I'm just going to take people who I think I could do something good against you know so yeah that's my kind of my my goal is to take it as it comes and uh and hopefully like get some good battles out there and have fun with it you know definitely no that makes sense man and um is there any like leagues in particular that you'd like to get on at some point um so yeah i mean like obviously like having having kind of started started watching um don't flop. I obviously want to do, I want to do a battle there just for posterity. You know what I mean? Um, and because there's like quite a lot of really good, there's quite a lot of really good rappers like coming up now on, cause they're, you know, they've spent a lot of the last few years kind of um, growing new talent and stuff. So there's some really good, there's some really good guys out there now. And um, I guess like, I'd like to be considered one of those guys really. Um, I would, I would, bat, I would battle on most leagues in this country. Just, just, you know, because I, I I really rate Premier. I really rate like Beast Anglia, and there's a lot of like cool leagues out there. Um, it, yeah, I'm just uh, just up for battling like good opponents, really, um, and 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 having fun with it. Sure. And anyone spring to mind that you want in the near future? Then. <laughs> yeah, I tried to have a think about this. I don't know, man. Like, because. So, so, I mean, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to dive in like, like early doors against him, but like, obviously, you know, like Georgie Roots is a, is like a fucking sick rapper. Um, and I, I'd love to at some point maybe do some kind of unbeat thing against him. Um, but that's kind of in the distant future rather than like in the immediate, like upcoming six months or something. I want to kind of cut my teeth a little bit on some, you know, on some actual acapella stuff and kind of see how, how my shit works in in the room you know before i before i uh dive into into the slightly deeper end but um yeah there's some really good battlers out there i don't the, the difficult thing is is that like ideally i don't really want to battle my friends you know <laughs> like i kind of want to battle people who i can be mean to and not feel bad about it um <laughs> so which is why like yeah i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll get this luigiano kind of battle done and dusted and and then kind of see what names people throw about and then kind of decide from there that makes sense man no that's fair enough and um one of the uh one of the questions that i've been asking people which it's generally been the the question that people have found the most difficult to answer but if you were putting together your own event and you had unlimited funds to put the event together yeah. what matchups are kind of dream matchups for you and what would you put on the card I think like there's there's definitely some names that that come up that I would want to have on there. Like I'd love to have like 
a kind of like loaded hollows or something i'd love to have a, a loaded hollows batter, battle or like a lux uh lux battle on there just because he kind of like embodies the kind of excitement of big time battle rap you know um but yeah i think it's been it's been one that's been mentioned a million times but like um shufflo versus ilmac and the source i think would be incredible to be to, to be you know witness to yeah. i'd love to see um because i want to i fucking love that battle um that dunch and e farrell did together like against each other and i'd love to see those guys as like a as like a tag team against someone else i don't know who i'd put them up against but those guys are so fucking funny that i think they would be just amazing like in that sort of environment um and also e farrell just he hasn't battled over here and i think he's sick so he just needs to he needs to come over here man i'd love to see tony d versus b magic i think that'd be cool because I love, I think B, B Magic is sick, and I know that Tony respects him. So I think that'd be a really cool battle. Yeah, um, I like that. And maybe, some, I mean, like the, the obvious one, because I love Big K, I'd love to see him go up against the UK guy, and the obvious person to put him against is Shocks. So like Big K versus Shocks, I think would be crazy. If Shocks was, if Shocks was like prepped and like, you know, because he's had a few misfires in the in the last few years where he's had shit going on in his personal life if he came prepped and like like grade a shocks versus grade a big k it would be fucking nuts um absolutely yeah that yeah, makes so my list as well to be fair does it yeah no i think that's just it's it's just a must have at some point um and then and and like one of the most entertaining guys in, in battle rap is Pat Stay. I think he's fucking, he's so good at rapping, but he has all of, he's got such a rounded skill set for a battle rapper. He, he can, he can clown the fuck out of people. He, you, you instantly just like, like the dude, but he can also bully people. And it's, it's rare that you, that you can do both of those things to such a great degree, as well as just wrap your ass off. Cause the guy can write, you know, and I, I'd love to see him um, maybe up against, Oh God, I don't know who would be ideal for him, but he he shines in all kinds of things. But maybe someone like like K Shine or someone, because then he, you know K Shine would be bringing that like angry energy and shit. But Pat Stay could could really flip that on him. I think it could be. I think that could be a really sick battle. I don't I don't think they battled each other anyway, but I think that would be a good battle. Um, yeah, they haven't battled yet, and um, from what I've kind of heard at the moment, apparently it is. It's on the cards for URL's next gnome event. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. And I, I and also, you know what, like again, it was something that was supposed to happen and it never happened. But like um like Carter Deems versus Harry Baker or something like that would be fucking just what like one for the history books. Um Definitely. I'd love to see C Major come back because he was one of my faves and you know, he's one of my boys as well. Like I've tried to talk him into battling millions of times since he stopped, but he's just, uh, you know, he's, he's very much about just making his music now. And I totally respect that, but I'd love to see him come back and, and maybe battle, you know, if it was to be worth his while, maybe if he battled someone who was a bit more of like an industry dude, um, because then that would be a kind of different kind of promo. Um, so yeah, I don't know who I put him up against, but maybe someone who had a little bit of clout outside of battle rap, you know? Okay. Um, he was yeah. going to come back and battle Tony, right? At one I point. know, yeah, I know. I was so stoked about that. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, life reasons, I guess, it just didn't come off. But that would have been... Uh, I was super pumped for that. I'm not going to lie. I was bummed when they, when, they, when they pulled that battle. But yeah, man, I'd love to see him come back because he is... That guy's on another planet with like the way that he puts together metaphors and similes and the way he puts together words. He's just... He's, he is, he's one of the UK's best lyricists, like, you know, by, by a stretch. And certainly in UK battle rap, he's, he's like miles ahead of, the, of the, the fray. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do agree. Definitely. But um, yeah, and then, I, I mean, I'd put Yunan on there because, again, he's one of my boys. But I don't know who I'd have him battling. Some, some American guy. I'd love to see him go up again i mean obviously i've seen i saw him battle big t but i'd love to see him battle maybe like a john john or something like that i think that would be pretty cool yeah i've, I've always really wanted to see you nan danny myers i just think it makes oh, sense shit. But... that's a good call yeah like two energy bombs on stage yeah. that would be fire. definitely i think that'd be amazing and i know danny's like i know he wants to get over here as well like 
I yeah. think so. From what I've been told, he was originally going to battle Shocks on that Empire card where Shocks ended up battling Sensor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, yeah, but that was, I mean, I'm glad that battle happened anyway, to be fair. Oh, yeah, 100%. But yeah, Danny Myers Yunnan is a, is a hell of a matchup because I think they would just be so in each other's shit and just like bouncing off of the, you know, the walls and shit. I think that would be just electric to watch, man. Agreed. And E. Farrell, so it's very underviewed, but he has actually been over here. Right, okay. He, um, Who did he battle? Battled Heretic. Did he? Yeah. Oh, shit. I can't. Well, okay. I'd, love to, I'd love to see him come back, man, because he, he is like, he's just got his own vibe, you know? He's, he's funny and like, He's very, um, he's very like, like postmodern with the way he, his character is, you know. And he, but again, he can, he can really write bars, and he knows how to put together, like, a, like, like punches, but like punches that can creep up on you and stuff, you know. He has, he's got a real unique style in that respect, and I think he's, yeah, I think he's fucking great. Yeah, me too, man. I agree, and he's, um, I'm pretty sure it was actually next in line too where they battled. Right, um, right, 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 right. So like the shocked gem event, but but yeah. Yeah, yeah. He I wasn't at the event unfortunately, but from what I heard he, he went down really well over here as well. So it'd be yeah, good no. to see him back definitely. But for sure. Like, I mean sorry, go on man. No, no, I was just gonna say this there's, there's there's so many it would take a series of events for me to get all of my dream matchups happening. Do you know what I mean? But um yeah like yeah, there's the, those definitely those ones I've I've mentioned are are ones that like, yeah, really, really I would love to see happen. You know, makes sense. And I I think Yunnan's kind of due an international in the sense of his last one would have been. Would it was it a hundred bullets? His last one now. Um. Yeah, maybe it was. He did it, within like a two-year period. I think he did a hundred bullets in Big T, and then uh, and he hasn't really done many other internationals, to be honest. Considering that he's been kind of like in the top five, top most people's top five, top ten for fucking a long time, he really hasn't had that many opportunities with like internationals. And I know he was meant to battle Oops on yeah. that um, card that the that new London um, league that Rivers is involved with and stuff. I know he was meant to battle Oops on that. And I heard some of his material for that. Like, so I think that was going to be pretty fire. But again, Oops is, he's kind of like, he, he, like he's really sick, but he's like maybe not a big enough name I, I, in a way. Like he'd be, if the battle be sick, but I feel like Yunnan deserves like even a bigger name, even though you know Oops is famous in really weird ways in comparison to a lot of battle rappers. You know he has a lot of crossover yeah. shit going on, but I yeah I definitely love to see Yunnan up against yeah like a Danny Myers or like a John John the Don where people know the name and they're gonna check it. You know what I mean? I think that would be that would be great. Yeah, agreed. I'd uh, really like to see Yunnan go back over to like Canada or America at some point as well. To be honest, I've been like, saying this. Yeah, I've been saying this, like, you know, to, to, to get on, like, a World Dom event or, like, a Blackout event, something like that, I'd love to see him back on there because he went and did that, that um, Battle Verse uh, 8, HK or someone like that. can't remember. The guy, the... the Shit, the, yeah, he did. With. He did, yeah. Yeah, he went and did that, and I don't think he, I don't think he felt like that, that he really repped himself that good. And, you know, in the form that he's been on, in the last year, save for like one, one battle, that Irish battle, he, um, I think he'd fucking kill it. You know what I mean? And he's, he's, he's kind of, uh, he's in a slightly different like headspace now than he ever has been where I think he can just like churn out like fire material, um, and rise to the occasion. So I think like, yeah, a big event like that would be, yeah, really great to see him. The, the problem is obviously with like UK battle rap holding a little bit less sway than it did. It's harder for, you know, Gannick and those guys to actually see people who are really making moves over here because they're not necessarily watching as many of the battles from over here, you know? So that's, you know, that's working against us, but yeah, I'd love to see 
Yunnan back over there. I'd love to see Seoul back over there and just, you know, re- repping the country as they can, you know? Definitely. Yeah, man, agreed. And, like, if you, if you had to go for your top five then, um, if we keep it UK-based, but is okay. it... Are, are you going C major and Yunnan top two? Yeah, for sure. C major and Yunnan top two, because I, I, both those guys, man, they're my homies, but they are primarily the the original reason we like started like talking was because i really respected what they did and had a lot to talk to them about you know what i mean and it's like oh shit i just took my microphone sorry give me one second i don't know why i've done that um like i became close friends with them but still rep them to the end with like how good they are they're they're insane and uh both of the thing that they both have in common as well is is like they're equally fire on beat as they are a cappella. and so i respect them from a musical perspective there and i think yeah those two you you know uk wise definitely i think i think shocks when he's on his game is 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 up there um yeah. and the other two that's tough because I feel like I haven't really represented much of the comedy side there. And I really love that shit. So it would be, if I'm allowed to count Shuffalo as, as one, then they would be in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. And then hmm, who else? Who else? God, I'm going to be missing someone like really obvious because I'm, I'm on the spot. Um, Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Tone, to be honest. I think yeah, he's fair enough. It's a good list. One of those guys, like, he's, yeah, he's just got, like, a different understanding of how of how rap works, and it's just so effortless for him, um, which, you know, unfortunately means sometimes he doesn't put the effort in. <laughs> but when he does, and when he, when, he's, when he swags on people, like, you can't beat that guy. He's just too fire. You know what I mean? He has, he has, ser- he served up you, man. Like, he, he, and 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 like that that should have been closer you know because in terms of skills their skill sets like they that should have been head to head but he's just got something else about him like something like in his charisma or just the way that he deflects shit it makes him quite a difficult opponent for people i think definitely no agreed and yeah it's, i can't argue with that list to be fair they they're all in or around my top 5 as well to be fair so but you know i'm missing some people like obviously like you know fucking osh is just amazing for a completely different reason and like harry beck is amazing for a completely different reason you know so it's hard to a top five is always going to be hard if you like more than one style of battle rap yeah of course yeah and i think osh osh makes mine as number one every time personally but he's he's also like the first battle i ever saw was O'Shea versus lego which is kind of the reason why i'm as into it as i am now but and the thing is about oh it's amazing really because even when he's shit he's great do you know what i mean like when he shows up with zero bars and he's pissed it's still fun to watch and not yeah. many not many people can do that like one of the things that i designed for don't flop back in the day was that um did you ever see that um shit on a shark t-shirt that they released yeah i love that yeah well, that was my drawing nice man yeah yeah so so like that's one of the one of the we were actually going to do a full series of like um of like t-shirts with different so i designed one which which never came out because of you know different structural changes in the company let's say um and like different focuses and stuff but i designed one which was like um a a shuffle and marlow t-shirt that was going to be you know the you know the thing that they did against um who was it they were against? Was it C Major and Cracker? Where they did, where they did like the Friends Forever, Penn and Teller, all that bit. Yeah. So I was, so I designed a T-shirt for that that had like the whole thing written behind them, and them like sort of jumping up and doing a high five sort of thing. Like it was super, it was super ridiculous and silly, but it was yeah in that same kind of cartoon style. And yeah, I was doing that. I I, I even designed a fucking. I designed a shoddy tee for them back in the day, but then obviously shoddy and Ro- Rowan stopped getting along and I've designed loads of shit. I, I, I like, there was a, there was like 10 different um, tees that were going to come out in that line, but got shelved. So, yeah. 
Right. Okay. That would have been good to see, man. That's a shame. And um, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure if I've got this right or not. But you were you were behind the the strange clothing brand as well. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. 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 So that was kind of like um. So basically, the kind of one of the reasons why that happened. Um, obviously, I'm an illustrator. I've, I've like you know been like drawing shit my whole life and I kind of was looking for ways of making my art of value to people without having to sell it for extortionate amounts of money um obviously like the 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 kind of way that that worked out was everyone wants to wear t-shirts and shit if I put my art on t-shirts they'll appreciate that it looks cool without having to spend you know over fucking 20 pounds for it you know and and then the, the cumulative kind of sales is what then makes the art have value but um but like the reason why that happened was me, Sam Graphics and Rowan were going to start a t-shirt company. After they asked me to, um, to draw the, the Osh t-shirt and I helped design some of the other logos and um, sort of tweak some of the designs that they had, we were putting together um, a t-shirt company called Blood Soap Banknotes. And so I did all the designs for that and then again i think then for whatever reason that was around when sam stopped working and started working at unilad or something i can't remember exactly what went down to be honest but basically i did a lot of work for it and then nothing came of it and i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna do my own thing and that's what gave me the kind of push to then put together strange and start putting those teas out and obviously i had a bunch of battle rappers repping it even though it's quite a weird brand for hip-hop you know it's more of like a it's more of like a alt like alternative fa like streetwear fashion brand but certain sort of like maybe some of the weirder battlers like like shuffle um he started he started repping it in battles like kruger was wearing it definition wore it UNAM wore it, C Major wore it. So like a lot of those guys started repping it. And um, and yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was like, a, it, was a, it was a very main focus for me for a little while. But obviously if you're a person who has a lot of strings to their bow, which essentially, you know, I'm involved in loads of different creative projects, like, you know, recording for other people and recording for myself and as well as like my own illustrative projects and stuff um sometimes that comes to the forefront sometimes it sinks back a bit and i and I, I although i have a bunch of new designs for it um which i was gonna debut this summer i'm gonna wait on it because people aren't i, I mean although people are shopping and stuff it's not really a time to right now to be launching a new product range i don't think <laughs> no no that um, makes sense yeah so so it's kind of one of those things that pops up now and again where you know i still sell stuff like it's without me even promoting it really um but uh yeah it's it's very much um a thing that's still around but i'm gonna kind of mm, kind of make a bit of hype around it when i do a sort of a relaunch as it as it were but yeah man i've been doing that as one of the many projects for quite a few years now nice yeah i've um i've actually got uh strange clothing t-shirt as well like a, hey, one of the my guy like baseball t-shirts so like the raglans with the uh the bison on the front of it yeah yeah nice 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 yeah, yeah i did a little series of those where you know i wanted like i was putting like strong animals basically on those raglan t-shirts because i think um the t-shirt as well you know uh, that style uh, especially like you know like it, it broadens out the look of your look of like uh, the look of a dude so if you put like a strong animal on it as well it kind of like it just gives it to me it looks like powerful or whatever so that was kind of my idea behind that and it was kind of almost i guess i was treating them like spirit animals you know what i mean like invoking the power of an angry bear or whatever you know like uh, that was kind of my thought process behind it yeah okay interesting man. and yeah I, I love that top i wear it quite a lot to be fair but the it's interesting to hear about blood soap banknotes as well because I, I never really, I remember seeing Yunnan wear it. I think it was in the the Diz battle. He had like yeah. a, a sweatshirt on, and I could never find anything about it online or anything. So yeah, it's yeah. So like to know the story. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I did loads of designs for that, and um, we, you know, like 
it, it was looking really sick, but yeah, it just, it, it, it's just one of those sort of projects that kind of, I don't know, just went by the wayside when people focused on other things or when people changed roles and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was one of those, cause there was another t-shirt company as well um, that you might, you might've seen bits of because a few battles wore that. So me and Bam were starting a company called Brightsiders and I did a whole bunch of designs for that as well. And like a lot of the, it, mostly people were wearing the beanies that had it on, but like a couple of people modeled like the, the tees and stuff. And again, we, we kind of got that to a stage where it looked like we were about to kind of launch it. And then again, different things happen. And you know, it's, it was, that wasn't any kind of personal issues because me and Bam are still like buds, man. And it was just like, I think when you, when you have people in these kind of, jobs like other creative heads who like everyone's focus is always splitting off in different directions and and kind of like they get excited about different things at different times if you don't move on something quick enough it can fall by the wayside and i think that might be what happened there you know because obviously now he has like a pretty um pretty like cool setup in terms of his like podcasting and um vlogging and then also like you know he, the guy interviews massive like Hollywood stars and shit. So he's kind of like he just took a different path, you know. Sure, that makes sense. And but the was designs that for the, that were fucking rad as well. <laughs> was that the one with like the the bear with the glasses on it? Then is that right? No, um, no. So that the one, um, no, though the bear with the glasses on it. That was for that was another company. They were called Rhyme Square, and they were some other guys like uh, they're there were these two rap rapper guys they were doing that stuff no right. it was um our sort of like logo for that was was like um i basically drew like all of the, the planets but like as kind of as kind of like cartoon faces i guess but they looked cool they, that sounds like they were whack but they looked real cool and i did some other like space related um things like i did a crest that had like two cosmonauts on it and like it was really detailed kind of cresting, but it was like that stuff because, because strange was very much more like um, that kind of alternative, almost like tattoo culture, all of that kind of stuff aimed towards that. Um, this was going to be my, like the project that I was involved in that was way more aimed at a hip hop audience. You know, they looked like the kind of tees that like rap dudes would wear basically. But yeah, again, we, we kind of like, we made a basic, um, prototype run of things gave them out to people and then we just never like we just never got a fucking act together i guess <laughs> right it makes sense man but no it'd be good to see the uh the strange clothing lineup again definitely and uh if you do get it up and running at any point let me know and i'll uh i'm sure i'll be purchasing another t-shirt man but like For sure sure Apart from that, that's that's all the battle rap kind of questions done with. But with yourself, like you said, you know, you've you've been a musician for a long time now. Like you said, you've you've supported a lot of people and stuff. Like, yeah. is there any kind of big acts that you're particularly proud of that you've supported personally? Um, well, I guess it depends on how much people listening to this know about the kind of like rock world, I guess. But probably like my best um my best experiences in terms of touring and stuff were was like touring there was a band called what well, there is a band called alexis on fire um and they they're a really really big band from canada and they yeah, toured dallas green right yeah 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 so so i toured with them maybe six or seven times um and actually dallas um so th the band i was in at the time was called lights action I've, in fact this year i've just re-released the, the album that we put out back then uh, so that came out in 2011 or 2010 around then um and um i i put that out and um dal um dallas sings on the last track on our album um so uh he was part of a choir um basically or no we put together a choir i should say which consisted of him a guy called richard walters um who's a really big singer songwriter um uh the singer from Monine, a guy called kenny bridges um, ourselves and then this other band called Silent Film and we made a choir and, and recorded everyone so he's actually on the track um, and yeah like uh, you know l learned a lot from touring with those guys we in fact I played we played it the first ever City and Color show 
um, in London um, was in the Barfly, and it was just him playing acoustically. But we we pretty much supported him on that. Like, in, in, he played before us actually, so I guess he sort of supported us, but not really because they were kind of treated as two separate shows. Um, but yeah, man, like um, those guys obviously played at Download Festival and you know Tea in the Park and all these these big events supported um uh, like you know your funeral for friends and those guys like um other big kind of rock acts at the time and you know one of our videos was like the most requested video on kerrang one month and and shit so you know ha had like a what some people would call success um in that arena but at the same time you know not quite to the to the level that I imagined it happening as a kid, you know, where I was like, fuck, you know, I'm going to be playing arena shows and stuff. But, you know, I've, I've played in front of thousands of people before and and really it's taken me a long time to kind of become proud of that because at the time it seemed like not enough. You know, I was like, I, I, I want to be playing in front of 20,000. I want to be playing in front of 100,000. Why am I not doing, why am I not getting up to those levels? And actually looking back on it now, like, some people would kill to play in front of the amount of people I played in, in some of the events that I did. So really, um, yeah, it's only in hindsight that I'm like, that was great. Like, I'm really happy with what I did there. And, and the album as well, at the time I was too close to it um, to kind of realize that, you know, now when I listen back to it, it's, it's fucking great. Like, I'm really, really proud of it. So I think it's a kind of lesson, I suppose, that sometimes you need to take a step back and get some perspective on what you're doing and, and, uh, and actually what you could be doing, what, what you are doing could be way better than it appears to you at the time, you know? Um, sure. so yeah, man. And, and, and yeah, like I, I definitely ticked a bunch of, um, bucket list boxes while I was doing that stuff. And now even I, I, um, I like, Oh man, I supported some crazy bands as well. Like, I don't know if you know anything about metal, but <laughs> I, I like even when I was in like a kind of emo rock band, I guess we supported a band called Lamb of God. They're like a really big metal band, and they're, yeah, they're way huge, right? <laughs> they're way too heavy for us to have played on a bill with, but um, but they were such nice guys, man. I shared a bag of cookies with those dudes. Really cool guys, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. So yeah, no, it's 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 been a journey. Um, but yeah, even now, like I, I release stuff um, under the name Patrick Crow. That's like kind of acoustic singer songwriter stuff. So very different to the hip hop stuff I'm doing. But um, yeah, so that stuff's out there. I've and I've got multiple other projects. I've just I've just recorded some vocals for um, most probs putting together like a, a UK garage style album. Um, but like you know, with a it's more of a musical twist. I've recorded like two sets of vocals for that. As has P Soldier, and well, he's doing some bits with him and. Um, a few other, a few other, like uh, I think maybe Blizz is involved as well. And I've and I've done, I've worked on some stuff with Blizzard. I've, you know, I've got, I'm going to be putting out just some straight up hip hop stuff as well as featuring on loads of tracks. You know, a track with Yunan. I've, I've even like, I'm working on a. Well, yesterday, Real Deal sent me a track that he wants me to write for, so I'll be doing a track with Real Deal. Um, yeah, man, lots and lots of work and like shit i'm really excited about um so yeah man like just just love making music really <laughs> it's amazing man yeah like alex is on fire there I, like i'm aware of them like I, I like the i think they did a track called born and raised that i really like yeah but, man yeah. like city and color is like i'm a huge fan of like just dallas green as a whole so yeah, he's incredible really cool yeah, that guy, like that guy, that guy's uh, voice and like songwriting is is amazing. Now, see, the thing is, like, so in that band, Lights Action, um, there was a guy called Carl Barham, and he, uh, you know, like he was basically the main, my main sort of songwriting partner in that um, band. He was like instrumental in getting, well, no pun intended, in in getting the band together and making it happen. He was a very driven uh, man, and and uh, he um was also a sound engineer so he ended up working for alexis on fire and city and color as like their main monitor engineer tech guy and so he toured for years and years with those guys he ended up being um i don't know pretty much dallas is like not right hand man but maybe you know he 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 produced um like 
quite a few of the songs on the last um, couple of albums uh, and, and always was touring with him. So I mainly only got to see him when he was touring um, and stuff like when, when they popped back here um, and I saw him in Florida, I went over to Florida and, and caught a city and color show there. Um, unfortunately he, he passed away last year um, while he was on tour with city and color. Um, like he, he, uh, he drowned while, while he was in Australia. So um, hence the reason why I know this is like some heavy stuff, but hence the reason why I've re put out that album um, and, and all that kind of stuff, because uh, it's kind of in memory of, of, of Carl, um, you know, and he was, he was an amazing guy and you may, I don't even know how closely you follow City in Color, but he put a bunch of posts about um, Carl, um, who we called horse. And so like uh, since, you know, in the last, well, sort of, I don't know, eight, eight months or whatever. Um, when, when he plays, like he, he has like a giant, uh, like picture of a horse behind him on stage, uh, for certain songs, um, representing like, you know, my, my, my friend Carl, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd noticed that actually, now you mention it, I wasn't aware that that was the reason behind it kind of thing, but that, that makes a lot of sense now, but, no, I don't, that's sad to hear, man. I'm sorry to hear that, but I mean, amazing that you got to work together with those guys. Yeah, you were you were saying about um, Dallas Green having like the the horse visual behind him and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. I think I have noticed that before, so it's good to put that to something. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, it's really it's it's you know it's cool. I went to, I I did go and I went and saw him. He played in London. Uh, recently in um, where is it the uh, one of the it's the one that's right next to um, Oxford Circus Station a big fucking one is it it's not the Palladium London Palladium so I went to go see him play at the Palladium and he dedicated uh, basically the majority of his or you know he dedicated his set to Carl essentially and I know that I know that those guys obviously you know they were on tour with them and it must have been a real struggle for them to, to sort of carry on after losing a close friend like that. And it's insane because I know how much it hit me and the other guys who had been in the band with him it must have been insane to have uh, been on tour with him. So yeah, you know, pr pretty crazy. And, and like, I, I, like I was saying, I think just before we got cut off, um, like, you know, sort of call was was you know much of the reason why i went i mean i was always gonna try and and do music you know but he was much of the reason why i i learned so much about the the professional side of it and the reason why i ended up um in those kind of exalted positions where i was you know playing huge festivals and um you know like demoing for major labels and and all that kind of stuff so uh, i owe a lot to that guy and and yeah it's 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 crazy it's just one of those learns that you know, that I've had in the last few years, um, for for whatever reason, um, you know, a lot of times the hardest the hardest moments um, in your life do give you the biggest kind of learns and 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 do sort of alter your perspective on what's important and and stuff like that, you know. Because since then, um, you know, well, since last year, you know, losing several people who I really cared about, um, I. I, I've changed um, the kind of the amount of, of, of time and effort I, I put into my friendships and my family relationships and and also the amount of time that I put into the things that I'm really truly passionate about you know like and you know you uh, whether or not you noticed or not earlier on in this conversation it's just now become part of my general conversation like that I could die tomorrow because I've lost perfectly healthy perfectly um, strong people who had a lot to give um for just like in an instant in the past in the past like year or so so it's it's altered my um my kind of perception of of maybe how much time i might have you know if i'm lucky and i and i live for a long time then that's great but in the meantime i need to make the time i've got count and that's why i'm i'm putting myself out there so much more now and really um dedicating a lot of time to the shit that i that i love which happens to be you know music and art so yeah man it's it's a it's a it's a very uh it's a it's a different kind of place where i'm at now but i'm 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 like everyone should do i'm trying to use uh these sort of negative experiences to create something positive 
Nice. Yeah, man, it's a, a good way to look at things. And, you know, obviously my condolences as well. It's a, a shit thing to have gone through, man. But, like, with with yourself then, so I, I've heard a couple of your, your, like, solo tracks as Patrick Crow and stuff on Spotify, yeah, yeah. I think. But, um, like, you've... Reese, you've you've released a single this year as well, haven't you? But have you yeah. got anything else in the pipeline on that front? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I've got one more song in the bank that I haven't released yet, which I'll probably put out like very soon. Um, I was meant to be in the studio, um, during this quarantine. I had, uh, for, well, I mean, it's it's been rebooked several times, but obviously he has to keep getting pushed back, um, because I played a couple of shows in December in like these cool sort of church environments like you know it wasn't like a christian show or something like that but they just took place in churches uh like acoustic shows and um and off the back of them um i you know i i got contacted by a, a really cool studio um offering me some time for free and then i've obviously wanted to i bulked that out with with other time i was going to pay for to to kind of uh, complete some some new recordings and i think um in terms of the way that this that kind of solo stuff is going like i'm i'm definitely bringing in a lot more bells and whistles than i well not literally <laughs> it's not gonna be a bell and whistle track but um i'm I, like i started out doing that project very stripped back you know just me and an acoustic guitar and maybe like a few kind of bits of percussion here and there but i'm 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 looking at recording um a lot of my new stuff with more of a full uh band uh, certainly like drums and maybe some 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 kind of strings and kind of interesting stuff like that but yeah and piano is going to be on there as well so it'll be f sort of filling out working towards an album which will be a full band sound and a lot more sort of epic sounding which is kind of m uh, more in my wheelhouse usually but i i wanted to take some risk and, and and write some stuff and record some stuff that was very very naked and very um just like like personal you know me and a guitar basically um so that stuff is yeah that stuff will will kind of um be be coming as it goes and and the reason why i wanted to do a solo project in the first place because i've been in bands for years um because i feel like when you're in a band you know it has an end like if the band splits up or whatever you know that's the end of that music most people then don't tend to go out and continue playing those songs you know unless they're doing it as like a cash grab but i wanted to do a solo project because i can be patrick crow forever so i can be you know i don't know like <laughs> like well into the future i could be in i could be like an old man like you know a johnny cash style old man like playing still playing shit in my sort of 60s 70s whatever until i die um but then the the with the kind of crow stuff so obviously like my my battle rap and my rap name is crow so still connected in a way but but a, you know a clear division in kind of this is a different this is a different sound this is a different project um and I, you know, I have a lot of different uh, avenues that I'm kind of pursuing for different sounds. So they'll all come out under slightly different monikers, I guess. Sure, that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, I like the the stuff that I've heard so far. Um, you did, did you used to have, I might have this wrong, I'm sure I've heard some stuff under like your, your name, Patrick Courier on Spotify a few years ago as well. Is that right? So, so actually, so this is the thing, right? Um, there's a couple of, so, like, say, for example, the C major track on uh, 10,000 Hours or 100, whatever it was, I think it's 10,000 Hours, that I'm, list, I'm credited on that as Patrick Courier. And, I'm, and he did another song, which was called Live from Cuba. I'm credited on that, as, but that's not on Spotify. That's on Band, uh, Bandcamp and SoundCloud and stuff. I'm credited on that as Patrick Courier. But the reason why I'm called Patrick Crow um, on Spotify is because there is a Patrick Courier on Spotify. So when I went on there to start, when I started thinking, okay, I'm going to do some solo shit. I went and checked on Spotify to see, is there anyone who's going to, that I'm going to be contending with on here. And there was, there is a guy on there called Patrick Courier. So I was like, okay, um, I've just come out, out of a, out the band I had been in for, for years since um, Lights Action. The band I was in was called Red Crow. So I thought like, Oh, you know what? Like I like that imagery. I'm just going to adopt that because, because all those songs I had written myself. So some of those songs became my solo songs anyway, seemed to make sense for a bit of continuity. And, um, and yeah, so that, that was the point is, is like with the Patrick Crow stuff, it's not like, um, it's not like just kind of a, a standalone music project that's going to exist for a few years. My idea with that is like, that's really my, um, 
my sort of uh, personal songwriting, not legacy, but the thing that's going to carry on throughout my whole life. And then there's going to be loads of other projects dotted, dotted around of different genres, you know? Um, and now when I feature on hip hop songs, rather than being Patrick Crow or Patrick Courier, I'm just going to be listed as Crow. And yeah, I'll start to divide them off. So it's a bit more easy to understand. But again, this is the whole reason why I, why I didn't like, uh, you know, you know, rap on on tracks before and stuff is because as a musician if you're if you're a musician who who loves loads of different styles of music and can create loads of different styles of music it can be very difficult to work out what's the best way to put that across to people because if someone thought if someone like likes one of my songs which is some heartfelt um, emotional rendering like that I've made and then they like search me up online and then find me like you know like spitting some like curse curse word laid in like rap tracks they're gonna be hella confused so <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's like always something that I have to keep in mind like how to create those clear divisions but without sort of going on about it for too long you know the, the kind of artists that I've always really looked up to are people who can do way more than one thing. So people like, I don't know, like Beck or like Mike Patton, these guys, because they, 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 any, any genre they put their hand to, they make it sound fucking sick. And I love music of all types. So why can't I make, you know, a fucking blues song and then like a, some sort of piano ballad and then a rap track. And then, you know, like, I, I'm capable of making it, so why the fuck not, you know? Definitely. No, it makes sense, man. And uh, I'd never really thought about it in the sense of kind of having to to create different aliases from it, but... Mm, yeah. Yeah, it, it does make a lot of sense. Like, I suppose you, uh, you... It wouldn't go down very well if we had Dallas Green doing his best impression of fucking Royce Five Nine or some No, I know. You see, that's the thing. That's the confusing <laughs> thing. And and the other thing is, right, without kind of like blowing my own trumpet, because like, you know, Dallas Green is incomparable as a vocalist. He's incredible, right? Um, I can sing. I can sing quite well, and I can write good songs. But I, but I can also rap pretty fucking good, you know. So so why not do that? And a lot of people who who can who can sing and write songs in the way that I do don't have that extra skill set. Um, so, you know, I guess that opportunity is removed from them, uh, whether or not they'd want to take it or not is another issue, but they don't have that avenue that they can take. Well, I, I do and fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it because ultimately, uh, I want to leave a bunch of art behind, you know, and like shit that, that, that kind of fleshes out what I was about on, on the earth you know <laughs> i know that might sound like i'm going into some philosophical region but that's genuinely how i think about it i want to make loads of stuff that represents what what i'm about and the and the sort of um the the, the more complex uh exploration of what it means to be a fucking human alive on earth i want to have all those things represented because that to me uh you know is it's fucking proof of life you know it's proof that i that i that i was here and what i could do you know sure no it makes sense man and then like there's there's three kind of music based questions that i've been asking everybody that's come on the show so yeah the first one is pretty difficult again but any genre at all but if you had to pick your top three favorite albums off the top of your head what would you go with right um, like, geez, probably, um, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by Smashing Pumpkins. Okay. That one is a special record for me. Um, then like, I mean, I'm not going to lie, uh, probably an MJ one, you know, like, uh, maybe, um, maybe maybe like bad by michael jackson you know like because that was that that you know when i was a kid the first shit that made me want to make music was was like listening to michael jackson stuff you know that stuff made me think like whoa like you can you can make some crazy stuff in this world if you get good enough and that was the shit that kind of like i don't know propelled me into 
learning how to sing and stuff, you know? Um, and then thirdly, I probably will pick a hip hop one for this one. But what is my, oh man, that's hard, man. Um, geez, I, I, I don't know what my favorite rap record is. That is a tough one, man. It, it's a hard question overall. Yeah, really hard, man. Oh, like I'm probably, I'm, I'm better at giving like my, my sort of like best songs rather than my best albums. But yeah, I don't know who I, I don't know who I'd pick rap wise. Cause I, I love like, I love the older school shit, like, you know, Illmatic and stuff. But then I, then also, you know, I love like more of the modern kind of weirder stuff, like Aesop Rock and stuff like that. I, I have loads of time for that shit as well. So it depends on my mood, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I can't answer, I can't give you a third one. The third one's got to be left like a variable, you know? <laughs> That's fair enough, man. And I, do you know what? I think the reason that we became friends on facebook was because of aesop rock um, yeah i think we were commenting on something about the same shit like yeah yeah man ace is insane man yeah that guy he's a special special guy yeah a huge fan man i've uh yet to see him live as well which i'm hoping mm -hmm. to do at some point in the near future but yeah, yeah man well he never comes over here but yeah it's um it's crazy because I, I i like when sort of twitter was kind of first like not first first popping off but in the very early stages of it i was really active on it i'm not very active on it now but one of the things that he used to do was like um was like a he used to do like one day a week he would you, he would like take suggestions for something for him to come up uh, with a hook about you know like and he'd write like two bars four bars or whatever um a hook that you know like essentially he was like gifting to you like about a subject and i um I messaged him once like oh, something, you know, like write a hook about Jeff Goldblum. And he responded to that one. He was like, oh, I love Jeff Goldblum. And he wrote this thing about how uh, something like, I can't remember the exact wording of it because I've lost it, but it was something like, uh, like who's that, who's that stuck in that old tomb? Something, something, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, and then, then like, pretending to be a <laughs> pretending to be a dj cutting the word fly like because he was the fly you know like about being fly or whatever and i was i was like pumped about that but i wish i could remember what it was because you know he did give it to me so i should be able to use that in a song like <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> nice man yeah yeah big aesop rock fan to be fair but like for for you then Again, this is probably quite difficult to to kind of narrow down with the amount of gigs that you've been to. But what stands out as the best live act that you've ever seen personally? Um, man, fuck. So, so in the past few years, I've been to some absolutely nuts. Uh, big concerts, you know, from from sort of like legacy acts. So, you know, I saw Lauren Hill. Uh, last year she was incredible i saw fleetwood mac the year before that fucking insane like that was a nuts uh thing and uh, i've kind of been trying to tick off like seeing those acts that might um sorry i had a siren going past there um but i've been trying to uh, take off those acts that like might stop performing you know i might never get another chance to see him because like say for example right i had tickets to see um to see prince when he was doing that residency in what, what was the millennium dome i had tickets to see him and uh, my band got a tour and we were and the night that i had tickets to see him we um we were playing we we had a show booked in uh aberdeen in scotland so there's no fucking way i was going to get there um so i had to just give up and like not go and see him i'd seen him a few years previously but he wasn't playing any hits he was playing like a jazz it was like a fully jazz show he didn't play any of his songs <laughs> that that anyone knew i think the only like like popular song that he played was a cover of whole lot of love by led zeppelin and other than that it was like jazz whittlings which was great but i really wanted to see him you know fucking sing when doves cry or something you know what i mean but still like yeah so i'm trying to tick off like all those acts that i could miss out on and i would really be bummed about um but yeah again like in terms of the best people i've seen it's so hard man because you know one of the times i've seen most deaf was incredible like um when i i saw method man and red man that was like s such a good gig because like method man's got this insane like 
stage presence. Like, you know, it's one of those things, you know, in hip hop, when people say you fucking throw your hands up in the air or whatever, and people join in, like if Method Man says it, everyone in the room fucking puts their hands in the air. He's got like this mad control over the audience, which is really something to watch. Yeah, but I've then, seen Meth myself, and I agree, he's amazing. His charisma is off the charts, man. Um, but yeah, and I've just seen so, you know, I've seen fucking Radiohead live. I've seen like some really big, uh, you know, other acts that which which should really be up there. So yeah, picking a best is is hard because again, I think it's easier for people when they just like one genre. You know, if someone's just like a just like into rock or just like into rap, you know, it's very easy for them to, to go, well, this is the best thing I've seen because all of those things are on a, on an equal playing field to a certain extent. Whereas if you, if you love something from every genre, it's then hard because you're in a way in your head, you're having to like decide what's the more important style of music to you. And I don't really, I can't really do that. (laughs) No, no, that makes sense, man. Like, yeah, I've, I'm into all sorts of music as well and been to a lot of different gigs and stuff. So I know where yeah. you're coming from, but like often for me, the, my, my kind of standout gigs that I've been to have been people that I wasn't expecting much of. Like yeah. I randomly got given a ticket to go and see big daddy Kane when I was oh, yeah. probably about 19. Um, Nice. And I, I knew the name, but never really listened to his stuff all that much and wasn't yeah, yeah. expecting much from it. And it's probably still the best like live act I've ever seen. Like he was Fire. incredible. Um, and you, yeah. I definitely see what you mean in terms of like ticking off the big kind of bucket list artists that might not be going too much longer as well. I was, um, yeah, sure. Lucky sure. enough to see the Prodigy's last ever show before um, uh, yeah. Keith Flint passed nice. away, well, which was good. But. I saw in because I went to I was I was at Reading Festival the year that um, uh, it was uh, the Prodigy and the Beastie Boys were the the, the, the two headline acts on the same night, um, so like one after another, and they were kind of in a feud at the time because um, because Prodigy had sampled. Uh, oh my god that's some funky shit they'd sampled that bit but um beastie boys were in like a real stage of like trying to get rid of the uh misogyny out of hip-hop and obviously prodigy had also released smack my bitch up at that time and beastie boys didn't like it they objected to the 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 tone or whatever you know and uh so they were like talking about each other on stage like in one you know in the beastie boys set they were they basically said like we don't we don't support prodigy or whatever and then prodigy said some shit as well like like, oh fuck beastie boys or something i don't know but anyway like i was very lucky to see those guys because they were both uh acts that i was desperate to see you know um but yeah man and like I'm I'm very I am very lucky because having played at a bunch of like festivals and and stuff like that I was you know I was lucky enough to see you know like Amy Winehouse in one of her last sort of gigs I was on stage for REM played in Tea in the Park and I got on stage for that because the uh, the the security like mistakenly thought that I was related to them so they just let me on stage and um, and two of the other guys in my band they just thought oh these guys are I don't know, their sons or some shit. And then, uh, and then two of the other band members immediately w- were walking behind us and they got refused. The security were like, no, sorry, it's family only or whatever. <laughs> so somehow, <laughs> like, I don't know who I was meant to be related to, but I, was, I watched, like, I watched R.E.M. perform to thousands of people. And, uh, you know, like some of these, just these acts, they just, they, you know, they're never going to play again. And uh, yeah, they're like very treasured memories, man, because live music is, is it's a very different thing yeah, to just listen to. Yeah, of course. Definitely, man. But yeah, that's uh, you've seen some amazing people, to be fair. And um, like the final three questions, they are just completely random questions, which have brought up some pretty fun answers. But <laughs> like, are you a big sports fan and do you have a favourite sports team? So... So I'm not really a big sports fan because um, like I can do a lot of things in my life, you know, like most creative things that I put my hand to, like I can do to a pretty high standard. 
uh, with sports, it's basically the exact opposite. <laughs> I'm fucking terrible at sports. Um, you know, save for like some of the more lame ones like badminton or whatever, you know, uh, like, so I don't support any, um, any sports teams. However, when I first moved over to this country, um, there was kind of like a weird bidding war in my school. Cause I came over, you know, started at my, at my GCSEs as the last two years of like school and, and, uh, ha having no kind of like football team that I supported or whatever, all my friends and different, <laughs> different different kids in the school would all like pitch their teams to me like oh no you need to support Aston Villa because blah 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 or oh no you know I support Liverpool or whatever and they were all like trying to get me to support their team basically um but I sort of figured like what's the fucking point in like just picking a team at random if I, if I see a game that is exciting then I will enjoy watching that but um but I, I don't religiously watch sports stuff I really, you know, a couple of years ago, I went to go and see the Harlem Globetrotters um, play basketball. But, you know, it's kind of like a, it's like a showcase, really. It's like just they mix in all sorts of shit, like fun yeah. shit. Um, and that was amazing. And I love to watch. I love, like, to see people who are sick at their sport do their thing. And that is, like, the, the Globetrotters are, like, basically just a team of show-offs in basketball. And I yeah. fucking love that. So, you know what? I'm going to claim the Harlem Globetrotters as my favorite sports team. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, if you're going to support anyone, support the best, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair one, man. But um, if you could pick anywhere in the world for your next holiday or your next trip abroad, where would you go? So... I've done a lot of traveling in my, in my, in my time. And I've been like to most places or well, most kind of continents. However, I haven't done any Africa stuff and I haven't done any South America stuff. Um, so those are places, those are like continents, you know, like, or like sort of areas that I want to visit, but actually top of my list is Japan. I really, really want to go to Japan, even though I was so close to it last year. Um, it just wasn't on the cards for me to go there. Like it, it super interests me, like the differences in their culture and the kind of ex extreme change in aesthetic. Um, I think it would be like quite an inspirational place to be. So yeah, I definitely want to go there. That's top of the list. And then shortly after that would be probably somewhere like, um, I don't know, maybe Peru or, or one of those kind of countries in South America. Um, and my family's always had like a big connection with um, Kenya in, in Africa. Cause my, my, my gran lived there as a child. Um, and my mum lived there as well for a while. And my, my sister a couple of years ago went and lived there for a year um, working in um, like, like basically conservation and, and like uh, helping um, like help, helping like teach kids and stuff like that. So I definitely want to visit there just as kind of part of the continuation of that story as well. Nice. Yeah, cool, man. And uh, to be honest, Japan's top of my list as well. So I get that. Oh, no. Colombia's probably second. So we're pretty mm -hmm. similar on that front. But yeah, where's where's your favorite place that you've been so far? Um, Like, OK, in terms of as a country, probably New Zealand, because it's insane like it's in terms of like temperature wise it's it's kind of it's very similar to the uk um like they have their kind of like you know wet and dreary seasons they have like a much sunnier seasons as well albeit like reverse to what we get them but it is fucking unreal like the landscape of that place um i i, I was there you know for like several months and i and i li was living in a uh, camper van so i was literally touring every every sort of area of the countries of, of the country like both islands um i should say and the south island is fucking nuts if you ever if you ever want to see crazy uh crazy landscapes and crazy like like bio systems like the south island of, of new zealand is the is the most insane place in the world because you can you can literally be on a sunny beach and look inland and see mountains with fucking snow on them from the hot beach. And you, and you, you can drive for an hour from a beach area and be in what looks like the Scottish Highlands. And then you can drive for another hour and it looks like you're in a fucking desert. You drive for another hour, you're in the swamps. It's 
mental like really really beautiful so much of it is untouched a lot of the land is like tapu as well which means like uh, essentially sacred land um for the maori and so it will never be built on never developed and so much of the the parkland and stuff there will never be developed and and so it's like i don't know if you ever watched lost or anything like that but it's kind of like the lost island it's crazy what you can see there and i highly recommend anyone uh who who likes to see something different to travel there because it's really really a very special place yeah my my stepdad's actually from christchurch oh so, nice i went yeah yeah we uh, i've i've been and I've, I've still not been to the north island unfortunately i've only been around the south island but like queenstown is possibly my favorite place in the world Oh, it's amazing, man! Did you, oh, mate, did you um, did you do the uh, luging? Did you go on a luge? I didn't, unfortunately. Oh, no. If, I, if you, um... When you go, if you ever go back to either Queenstown or if you go in the North Island to Rotorua, um, they have essentially, you know, like, um, like people in like winter sports, they luge, so they go down like essentially down like a ice ton, like ice road tunnel or whatever on like a little sled. Well, yeah. In, over there, they've invented a style of it, which is essentially like you can do during hot seasons. And you're kind of in like a little go-kart type thing. It's not like um, powered, but but um, like the whole thing is downhill, like steep as hell, downhill. And all you have the ability to do is turn left or right or like brake. And that's by pushing the, the steering wheel forward. So you're just going full pelt down these crazy ass tracks down a mountain. And then you get a ski lift back up and do it again. And it's some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. It's insane. Yeah, it does look fun to be fair, and I I, I bungee jumped there, which was nice. pretty amazing. Like, but nice. yeah, I love Queenstown, man. So that's what, where they invented it, isn't it? The, a lot of those extreme sports. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, New Zealand's incredible to be fair. So definitely agree there. And the the final question, which has brought some some good, but some absolute stinking answers so far, to be honest, but. You can pick one sweet and one savoury, but what are the go-to snacks in your opinion? Um, so, do you know what? Like, I'm going to go kind of basic with this because nine times out of ten, if someone asks me, if someone uh, asks me if I want anything from the shop, like if they want, it, if I want like a, like a candy bar or something, like I'll probably just ask for a Snickers, man, because like, Snickers always wins. It feels like a meal, but it's sweet. You know, it's got, it's got a lot of stuff in there and it's always satisfactory. I never feel disappointed by a Snickers bar. There's probably like sweet stuff that I, uh, that I like am more excited about, but that one is, more, is a more consistent <laughs> winner. In ter- if I look back on my life and think of how many times I've asked for a chocolate bar, probably Snickers, right? And uh, in terms of savory, if it's a snack, um, see a lot of my childhood ones were more American stuff. So you, you wouldn't really get them over here or you wouldn't get the same kind of thing over here. It would have been um, like, like cheese, like, like Cheetos basically, but the kind that they have in the States that look like little, uh, like a little caveman uh, clubs. <laughs> but over here, like they look more like what's it's and stuff like that. So not that kind. Um, right. In lieu of those, in lieu of those, probably it would be uh, like the the cheese cheese Doritos dipped in hummus is the one for me. That's my like ultimate snack on food. Yeah, good shouts, man. I like that, and uh, yeah, definitely better than some of the answers that I've had so far. To be fair, yes. so <laughs> can't argue with that, but. Apart from that, mate, that's pretty much all the questions done. But was there was there anything that we've not mentioned that you wanted to plug on the show at all? Um, well, I mean, I would say, like, with the upcoming releases and stuff, maybe that would be worth mentioning. Um, obviously, I've got, like, a track. I've got um, The Feast that just came out, which is um, with me and Lefty um, and a couple of guys from Legionnaire, so Beneficial and um, Shopstar. That, that song came out recently, which got me singing on the end. Um, uh, I've just recorded another song for, his, for Lefty's 80s album, so that will be coming out later on this year. Um, 
the the track with Georgie Roots and that. I don't know what it's called yet, but um, you know that that'll be coming out later this year. Uh, and if anyone's interested in checking out like what I've done in the past, um, if if they search for Lights Action, the the album's uh, called Welcome to the New Cold World. Um, that's on Spotify and all of the platforms. Um, so that can that can kind of I guess maybe contextualize what I'm talking about with like the rock stuff that I did. And then Patrick Crow, which is my uh, which is my singer songwriter stuff. Just you know, I guess just look out for all the music I'm making. Really, uh, the the hip hop Crow stuff will be coming out, coming forward. And yeah, uh, anyone who wants to support me, you know, much love to them because it, it is uh, it's 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 like what what life is about for me, you know. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, man. And uh, any any links that you do want in the description, like just send them over, and I'll. Uh, I'll put that in the Thank podcast you. is on like Spotify and Apple Music and stuff now as well. So getting quite a few more listeners in that sense. But yeah, no, it's it's been good to have you on, man. And uh, once the Academy series is over and I'm kind of able to go to more events as a fan again, like yeah. be good to see you at an event again soon. Much love, dude. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to catch up and grab a little beer or something. Definitely. But yeah, thanks again for coming on, man. And uh, I hope you stay safe over there anyway. You too, man. Thank you so much, dude. Take care. You too. Peace.